Ross, you say your estranged wife is denying that you are the father of her 15-month-old son, Damon. She claims the man she's currently living with is her son's biological father, but you hope today's DNA results will help you save and reunite your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Nana, as you believe, today's results will prove what you already know, that your husband is not the father of your son, and after the DNA results, you want him to move on. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Ross, why are you so positive that you're Damon's father? Today, I'm here, Judge, because my wife, Taryn, um, denies me my son, Damon. I know he's my son. We're married. We've been separated. After today, I really hope that this will help reunite our family. And, Ms. Nana, as you say, the baby's not your husband's. No. We've been separated for three years, and we just... It's just not... I'm 100% sure that it's Natavius's. All right. So, you were married. You were happily married. Yes, sir. Honor. For how long before things got rocky? Uh, two, maybe three months, and then everything... Oh, two, started. three months? Yes. Oh, okay. So, after two or three months of being married, things got rocky? Yes, yes. after I had my first... our first child, um, I didn't... I was never in the mood. Never wanted sex, and I kept on telling him that um, he should just sleep with somebody else since he was always complaining that I wouldn't yeah. give it up to him since I was his wife and it was my wifely duties to do so. Oh! So you're saying after having your child, your first child, yes. you were not feeling very... like being very sexually active? Yes. And so you basically told him, just go have sex with somebody else? Yes. Did you do that? I tried, but never did. So you didn't. So how do the mar how does the marriage get on the outs so that you end up separated? He asked my best friend to have sex with him, and she told me. <laughs> did you ask your wife's best friend to have sex with you? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Ross. <laughs> and what does she say? She said, "Yeah." Oh. She came over and then... And then did you happened. try to have sex with her? Tried, but nothing ever happened. And so once you heard that, what, you were done? Yes. Because you told him to go have sex with somebody else, but I don't mean my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> How long had you been separated before you found out you were pregnant with Damon? Three years. <laughs> Two years. I took her to the appointment. During that separation, were you... were you still intimate? Yes, Your Honor, we were. All right, so you were still having sex throughout the separation? Yes. All right. And so, at the time you found out you were pregnant, were you sleeping with anybody else at that time? Yes. Who was that? Natavius. All right. And that's Mr. Anderson? Yes. So, you believe that's who Damon's father is? Yes. But you let Mr. Ross take you to the hospital? Um, Natavius was at work that morning, and I let him go to work because I was... I didn't want him to lose his job. So, when you found out you were pregnant, who did you tell? I told both of them. <laughs> All right. You told both men I'm pregnant and both of you could be the father? Yes. Did both of them accept that fact or did they say, no, I'm not the father? They both accepted it. And so, now, Mr. Ross, when you find out that Miss Nanaz is pregnant, your wife, and you know she's having sex with another man at that time? No, I did not know she was having sex with Natavius at that time. So, he thinks you're gonna work it out and you say, no, you with somebody else? Yes. Are you cheating on your boyfriend with your husband? <laughs> Techn technically... How does that work? Uh, they... She puts it that it's technically not cheating since we're still married. Oh. Okay. So, when you find out your wife is pregnant, how'd you feel? I felt excited. We were about to have another baby, extend the family, try and, you know, kindle and everything. And you think, you know, you're already trying to rekindle the relationship and now this baby is gonna be the thing that really brings everything back together. Yes, Your Honor. Right? Yes, Your Honor. And, Miss Nanas, you... you say, I knew from the get-go it wasn't his baby. Yes.
But how do you know that? The blood type. Mm -hmm. Really? Natavius is O negative, just like Damon, and Andrew is O positive. And but before Damon that, like when that. you were just finding out you were pregnant, you say you told both of them. Yes. So is it safe to say that you didn't know and you thought it could be either one? Yes. Okay. Okay. So throughout the time you were pregnant, who went to the doctor's appointments with you? Andrew did. Mr. Ross, your husband. Yes. You went to all the doctor's appointments. Not all the doctor's appointments. There's times that I did ask to go, but Natavis went instead. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm still confused as to how you've come to the conclusion that it's Mr. Anderson's baby. Can you take me back to the night when you say you conceived? Somewhere around my birthday. Okay. Tell me what happened. Well, I had sex on my birthday with... Both of them. With both men? Yes. At the same time? No, not at the oh, same oh. time. Oh. No. No. <laughs> no. No. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Who did you have sex with first? Andrew. Mr. Ross, your husband? Yes. And um, later in the night, I had sex with Natavius later more than once. So then in the morning you had sex with your husband and then later on in the afternoon and the evening you were with Mr. Anderson. Yes. On your birthday. Yes. So if that's the case, how do we ever decide who's the child's father because you slept with both men in the same day? Unprotected? Yes, Your Honor. So you basically got you a double feature that day. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Your Honor, she did. So the truth is, you really don't know. So can you take me to the day Damon was born? Mr. Ross, you were there? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, so you at the hospital? I was the one that took her to the hospital. All right, so the day Damon was born, you go to the hospital, husband and wife pull up, go in, you all about to have a baby. Yes, Your Honor. Who else was there? Natava showed up <laughs> 30 minutes before she... Mr. Anderson came? Yes. Who went in the delivery room? We both was in the delivery room. <laughs> Jerome, have you ever heard of such? How many cases have we done? Almost a thousand. This was a first. The first. Both of you all went in the delivery room. Yes, Your Honor. Both men went in the delivery room. Yes, Your Honor. Both possible fathers were in the delivery room. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Who held your hand? Natavius My... did. Natavius. So Mr. Anderson held your hand. Yes. And what were you doing? I was tending to Ezra. The, the other kid. child? Yes. And so you invited both men up or you just... No, um, Andrew actually called Natavius for him to come up there. Oh. Wait a minute! <laughs> Wait a minute! Did you just say your husband called your boyfriend to tell him to come up there so he could be there when the baby was born? Yes, Your Honor. What is going on here? I just called him to let him know that I was taking Taryn to the hospital because she was supposedly in... But why? It's your wife. It's your wife. You think it's your baby. Why even call? Because it's the right thing to do. He was there. He's been there, so... Well, during that time, he also had a girlfriend who was... Who had a girlfriend? He had a girlfriend. Oh, so you showing out for your girlfriend. So who signed the birth certificate? Natavis did. Oh. Now, usually, in this court, we know that when a child is born within a marriage, usually the husband is presumed to be the father. Correct, Your Honor. And is the person that gets put on the birth certificate as father. I wasn't there to uh, waive my rights, so I don't see how he was even able to put his name on there. What happened? Do you remember? Were you conscious, Ms. Nennis? When... How did he get to put his name on there when you have a husband? When doing the paperwork, I quite literally don't remember. I was on a lot of heavy medication, so it's a bit of a blur when doing the birth certificate paperwork. So you so don't I... really know how the name got on there? No, he did the pa... Natavius did the paperwork. I just he, signed it. He sure did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. I have heard a lot of information about Mr. Anderson, Mr. Natavius Anderson, and I want to hear from him for myself. Jerome, please escort Mr. Anderson into the courtroom. He is here. Right up to the witness stand next to the judge. Watch yourself going up the steps. Well, thank you for joining us today. Mr. Anderson, can you describe your current relationship with Ms. Nanez? Um, yes, Your Honor. As of right now, we are not together. You're not? No, ma'am. Do you believe you're Damon's father? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Not only do I share a bond with my son, I honestly believe that we look alike and he looks like many different people in, in my family. And that's why you believe you're the father? Yes, Your Honor. Any other reasons? Has Miss Nanas told you you're the father? On um, separate occasions, there's been a couple of times where she has agreed that Damon is mine. So the day you were in the hospital, I need to know from you, do you know she's still sleeping with her husband at that time? At that time, no. You didn't know? No, not at that time. Oh. So that's why you executed the paperwork, because in your mind, she's separated from her husband. We're together now. I'm the father. I sign. Yes, Your Honor. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> so, Mr. Anderson, what is your relationship like with Damon? He's 15 months, beautiful little boy. What's your relationship like? I take care of him every day. Um... We play all throughout the day. So you are the father figure to Damon? Yes, Your Honor. Does Damon call you Dada? Does he say Dada to yes, you? Yes, Your Honor. Does he say Dada to you too? Whenever he's around, yes. <laughs> so before I go to the results, Miss Nanias, do you still believe deeply that Mr. Anderson is Damon's biological father? Yes. I do. And why do you believe that? Damon looks more like his family members than anything. Do you feel like Mr. Ross is claiming to be the father because he really wants to keep you and keep your marriage and your relationship together? Yes. Yeah. You say yes? It's been that way since we got together. He's never given us a chance to have a relationship. That's mainly the reason why I call Well, because they're still married and they're still sleeping together. I understand that, too. But... She's with another guy right now, too. You have another boyfriend now, Miss Nettis? Yes. You done weaved a web. <laughs> this is a lot going on. Yes. Before I go to these results, is there any possibility that neither man... No, there's no other possibility other than these two men right here. All right. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. Okay. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Ross versus Nanez, pertaining to whether Mr. Ross or Mr. Anderson is the father of 15-month-old Damon Nanez, it has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Ross. You are the father, Mr. Ross. You were correct. You. you don't look too happy about that, Ms. Nanez. No? Not really. So we got some work to do. We are literally all caught in the web. Everybody. You just caught up. You're not ending and resolving one relationship before you go on to the next. You're reaping what you've sown, and it's a lot. And I don't, I don't have to do that. I don't have to give you the wake-up call because I think this DNA result was it. Now, Mr. Anderson is on the birth certificate as father, but Mr. Ross is Damon's biological father. So you still the legal father. So you still responsible for child support and everything else. 
but it's his biological child. And it's been 15 months. Are you gonna be willing to remove your name so that the biological father can be placed on it? Of course. You will be. Okay, so he's willing to do that. Because you're gonna have to have some cooperation in this. You all gonna have to get out this courtroom and have some conversations in the living room. <laughs> Resolve your legal issues so you can grow and evolve emotionally and you can come out of this emotional prison I feel like you're in. You say your ex-husband, Mr. Lamb, is an oversexed man-child whose debauched sexual fantasies have landed you in paternity conundrum. You say that after doing everything you could to save your marriage, Mr. Lamb has turned that dedication against you by denying your three-year-old son, Preston, and you intend to prove paternity today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Lamb, Good you job. say your ex-wife was a serial cheater with an insatiable sexual appetite. Oh. You maintain she took advantage of your trust and routinely cheated on you in your own home, oh. and there is no way you are baby Preston's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Mullins, what do you mean he turned your dedication against you? I did everything I was supposed to do. I was faithful. I never messed around on him. I never cheated on him. You know, we had a family. We were... Our marriage wasn't that great, but I still did everything like I needed to do. And I'm just here to show him that he is the father. And how does it feel that he's denying your baby? I mean, it hurts, but I'm used to him denying him at this point. Oh, that's awful. Mr. Lamb? When you look at Preston, when you look at this beautiful little baby, this little boy, you don't feel like he's yours. She's told me out of her own mouth that I'm not the father. And really? I've heard from other people that, sh that they say that he, I don't have his, he don't look that like That is me. a lie. But how Who did cares? she tell you that you're not the father? She's testifying today that you are the father. Roger, when did I, she I tell you you weren't? Uh, right after he was born, Your Honor, she told me. Take me to that day. What happened? Keep on lying. After, after he was born, she told me, uh, that she believes it was Jonathan's after, or, yeah, Jonathan's after the incident we had. When he popped out, I made you apologize because he looked just like you. Do you not remember that? No. So it let's talk fun. about this other person in this incident. What's this incident? So, uh, his friend moved in with us. Um, he had a lot going on in his life. While you were married? Yes. Um, it was a temporary situation. And, um, Jason had told me that he fantasized about watching me have sex with another guy. And... Oh, it... Mr. Lamb, your husband told you that that was his fantasy? Yes. Oh! And at that point in our marriage, it was crap. I mean, it was complete crap. And... So, I was like, well, I mean, if this is what I need to do to try and spice things up and try to make things better, then that's what I'm going to do. Because, like, I, I mean, I took my vow seriously. So, how did you end up sleeping with Jonathan? So, Jason took my phone. After Wait, he... Mr. Lamb, that's your husband? Yes. Okay. So, he took my phone after um, he had told me about, you know, the fantasy he had. And um, after... I, mean, I, I didn't feel comfortable with it, but I finally agreed. And he took my phone and texted Jonathan and was acting like me and said something about us having a threesome. And Jonathan was like, I'm down. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm down? Yeah. You down, Jerome? No. <laughs> no. So, it was like a week or two later, one of my family members had our child, our oldest child, and um, that was just the opportunity that we had taken. And we went in the bedroom, and it all started from there. And then about 15, 20 minutes later, me and Jonathan felt really uncomfortable with it. I was just... It made me feel sick to my stomach. I was just very uncomfortable. And so we stopped, and he got mad that we stopped. Um, and... Mad? I told him, I was like, I mean, you can just finish yourself off, but I'm not... I'm done with this. Like... <laughs> I'm completely done. With the You're going to take an incomplete in this <laughs> class. <laughs> yes. So, nobody had finished. Um, me and Jonathan got up, 
and we went in the kitchen, we made some food, we waited on Jason to come out of the bedroom, and we just like kind of left it that way. Me and Jonathan never talked about it again. He, on the other hand, told the whole world about it. What? Yes. So you, you, you admit you had sex with your husband and yes. the friend? Absolutely. I did. And nobody finished, which is why you're the dad because when we actually did have sex, he would finish, Jonathan didn't. So how, I mean... Well, we know one thing's for sure. Threesomes lead to paternity court. That is definitely true. <laughs> so, Mr. Lamb, I gotta ask you, and you gotta be honest, was it your fantasy to see your wife have sex with another man? No, Your Honor. Oh, that, my gosh. That was not... So, heavy. how did this threesome happen? How would you agree to your wife having sex with your friend? That didn't happen until the night that me and her was doing that. And me and her was having sex one night, and he opened the door and came in on us. Wrong. And he asked us if we wanted to have a threesome, and she, she agreed to it. Wrong. Wow. Wrong. He was living with us. His mattress was in our bedroom floor. Me and him were actually having... Why did his mattress time. have to be in your bedroom floor? We had a two-bedroom apartment. The kids was in a room, and then we put his mattress in our floor. What about the living room? <laughs> what in the world? You all had this man out sleeping in the floor in your bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of something. Like I said, it was a temporary situation. So, Mr. Lamb, you say you saw them kind of start flirting and you could see something developing. Yes, Your Honor. Well, if you would have been there like... What did you to... see? What was happening? I, the night I came home, they were sitting on my bed. They were, like, she was leaned up on him. They was real close. And that's when I started having, like, started figuring stuff out. And that, and that wasn't the first did time. Did you say know. something? I did. I asked her what was going on. She said they were just friends. It ain't like that. And I've, I've grew up with him, so I've, I've been close to him, like, family also. But that was not the only time she did it, Yon. She agreed after she couldn't finish to try it again, him and her. No. Just him and her? Yeah. Well, us no. all together again, Your Honor. And... Well, so did you agree to this? She said since she didn't get to finish that time that she wanted to try it again and see if it would be any better. Oh, my God! This is just a disgusting case. <laughs> so, the truth is, there was more than one time. Yes, no. Absolutely not. No, and you know that is a, a lie. And Mr. and Mr. Lamb, you believe that your wife was having sex with Jonathan even without you? I seen a lot of flirting at that time, so, yeah, I started getting things in my head about them. Well, maybe it's your guilty conscience for not being the husband you were supposed to be. And I you was faithful. To you, you believe Jonathan is Preston's biological father? I've, I've heard her tell me, and then other people tell me that. When did she tell you this? Right after he was born. I did not. Right after he was right, born? Yes, because that's around that time is when she got pregnant, it was when we did the threesome. So, take me to the day you find out you're pregnant, Miss Mullins. Take me to that day, because I sure enough don't understand all this threesome. So, the day that I found out I was pregnant, um, I went... He was in the bathroom in our master bedroom at the time, and I went in there, and he had just got out, and I met him kind of at the bed, and I handed him the test, and he said, well, what are we going to do now? I said, well, I guess we're going to have a baby. And he said, well, that's probably not mine. Oh. And from then on... It was denial the whole pregnancy, the whole nine months. He didn't want... He was detached from the pregnancy. I mean, if I was hurting or, you know, something was wrong with me, because I had a lot of complications with the pregnancy, he was there for me as his wife, but not as the mother to his future child. Mm. And you could tell the difference. Absolutely. So, can you tell the court how close was the threesome to the window of conception? within a week or two. Okay. That's close. Yeah. Did you ever tell Jonathan that he was the father? I told him the dates and, you know, we all three sat down and calculated it all and we were all just stumped. But, I, I mean, like I said, 
me and Johnson, our argument was he never finished. It only lasted for 15, 20 minutes. Granted, it only takes one, but he never finished. There's no way. He's the father and he knows he is. So, Mr. Lamp, you've never really told this story. You've stated it twice in your testimony that Ms. Mullins told you, you are not the father. Yes, Your Honor. When did this happen? And can you give me the specifics? Not off the top, but I do know she has over and over told me that it is not that he is the father and that he looks like him. That he uh, looks like the other guy? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. She's told you this? Yes. Countless times. I mean, I've told him there are similarities. If we get to thinking about it, yes, but there's a lot of similarities between him and Jonathan as well. So that don't mean anything. He is the father. But if you say, I am certain that Mr. Uh, Jonathan didn't finish the act, so it has to be your baby, and I'm certain of this, it just has to be, then how do you also have conversation about, well, there's some similarities? I mean, I, it doesn't there's, go. There's always that what if, you know? All right, so now let's get down to what, where we really are. Yeah. In the what if. So the truth is, you believe it's Mr. Lamb's baby. But there is still that what if, even if in your own mind? Because we had unprotected sex. But I know that Jason is the father. Understood. So, Mr. Lamb, are you still friends with Jonathan? No, Your Honor. You're not? No, Your Honor. Have you had any conversations with him? I, I let him know back then that he, there's a chance that he was the father or I was, but... and. We really ain't really said much about it, but... What was I'm, his response? He was so gung-ho uh, 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 back then. What was he like when you said you could be the father? He didn't like hearing it. He, he was against it. He didn't want, he didn't want to be the father of the baby. So you see how these threesomes work out? <laughs> Not good. They get you in some trouble. So what's your relationship like with Preston, Mr. Lamb? Preston's three. Yes, you are. I mean, after, as soon as he was born, you know, I was, I, I was trying to be happy about it. I was there for all the doctor appointments, everything. And after, the, after he came out and then we were trying to figure out if it was mine or not mine, then she told me it was his, then I just went with it. Like, I feel like, I guess, I felt like she knew more than I did about it. So where is Jonathan? Does he have a relationship with Preston? He does not. Um, he's seen him when he was, what? couple days old, um, and that's, that's about it. I mean, he held him one time, and then... I mean, me and Jonathan still talk occasionally, but nothing like that. And he doesn't ask about Preston? No. Do you know where to find him if Mr. Lamb is not Preston's biological father? Absolutely. He messaged me um, when I was on the way here, actually, and told me to let him know. So he's waiting for the he results, want, too. I mean, if... Yes. <laughs> if he's his, he wants to take care of him. Is he down for being the father like he was down with the threesome? He is. <laughs> From what he says, he is. But he's not. He's Jason's child. Do you want to be Preston's father, Mr. Lamb? I do, Your Honor. I just want to find out for sure, though. I, I, I need to know for sure if he is mine or not mine. All right. There's only one thing to do at this point, and that's get the results. Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Mullins versus Lamb, when it comes to three-year-old Preston Lamb, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Lamb. John. You are the father. You are the father. That's your beautiful little boy. That's your son. 
I see tears in your eyes, Mr. Lamb. What are you feeling? Sad. Can you explain to the court what, what kind of sadness do you feel? I missed a lot, and I won't make it up. Three years. I see your tears too, Miss Mullins. What are you feeling? Happy that the truth is finally out there. And then I can quit being made out to some bad person saying that that's not his child. Looking back, do you regret having the threesome? Absolutely. I regretted it the day we did it. And I told him this. But like I said, I was trying to save what was left of a marriage because I took my vow seriously. I, I have never seen that work. Every time I see a couple get to a place where they decide they're gonna invite somebody else in their bed to spice it up or make it better, you know, I always say, it's like, sex is not a game. It is not better with more people like Monopoly, right? 